I don't know why I never know how to start videos like this. I think I'd never put a camera on myself before. Also, I have a cough drop in my mouth because I've been getting over a cold for like two straight weeks. Anyways, this video is to go over the books that I have not yet read that are a part of the Booker long list. And so those three that I'm gonna be reading in this video are After Sappho, Night Crawling, and Case Study. So I think I'm gonna start or restart with Case Study. I actually started reading Case Study like the day before or maybe the day the day that the Booker shortlist was announced on the way to the event and like barely any of it uh, but I stopped because then there was like too much excitement about the shortlist and I read Glory instead. I put case study on hold so I think that's going to be the first one that I pick back up. All of these books are going to be read on my e-reader because Booker sent me e-copies of each of the books when the long list was announced and they are sending me physical copies of the shortlisted books but obviously these won't be on that list and my library doesn't have any of the physical copies of this book but yeah i think my goal is to finish these within a week i think that that would be really helpful if that was something that i could accomplish today is monday night so i probably won't read much today um, also, I'm like really close to the end of <laughs> Caliban's War by James S.A. Corey, so I can't imagine- I'm planning on finishing this tonight and then actually starting on case study tomorrow. Like if I'm being realistic with myself, that's probably what's gonna happen. I just had to come back to say that I just finished Caliban's War and it ended in an insane cliffhanger and <sighs> it's so hard to not just pick up the third book right now. But Booker, gotta- gotta keep my mind right and keep it on Booker for now. Okay, I'm fine. I just, ugh, ah, okay. I'm fine. <laughs> Good morning. Um, it is Tuesday and we have uh, two cats in our house today. We found a little kitten uh, just in our neighborhood, underweight, needing some help and needing to not be outside. There's like bobcats and stuff that live here. It was really important to us to find the kitten and um, get it off the street, which somehow we were able to do. It took a really long time, but we were able to do it. And then um, take him to the vet, and now he's here, and we're trying to take care of him as best as we can with the goal of, at the very least, getting him healthy and making sure he's all good and keeping him until he gets some blood tests to see if he has leukemia or feline AIDS, which are things he could pass to Scout if they were ever to actually come in contact with each other. Right now they're separated and they will remain separated until we know about those things. But he's got a few things to heal up besides that, so we want to make sure that we can do that. But this did put my reading behind a little bit because I barely read anything yesterday. Basically all I read was the little bit before we found the cat. <laughs> I didn't read it all after that. But reading update, I am enjoying case study. So I don't think I said what this is about, but basically our narrator is looking into this therapist that was writing a book about how people don't need therapy or like some people don't need therapy and, and kind of getting them to that conclusion or showing them that they don't actually need therapy or something but he's like using his actual clients that he had to show them this and one of the clients was the sister i think of the narrator but that that sister ends up taking her own life so the narrator is looking into this because they think that the therapist was at fault basically for for this but yeah so far i'm enjoying it i just got through like the narrator putting in what's supposed to be the pages of the book that the therapist wrote that are, is about the narrator's sister so now i kind of understand where they're coming from i have read more of case study i'm actually i think 100 pages in at this point so definitely not where i had hoped to be at this point but that's okay things happen you know stray kittens show up outside your house and you just gotta take it in stride so i don't think i said but the narrator so she thinks that the reason why her sister veronica took her own life was because of her therapist of veronica's therapist so the narrator's idea is to become a client of the therapist to like research into this more or something and then to take notes about this in these notebooks so that's what the story is it's these notebooks so it's split into five different notebooks and then in between those notebooks we get like a little bit of biography about the therapist i assume i've only seen one of these at this point because i'm in the second notebook but that's like the format of the story so the narrator 
she takes on this persona of Rebecca Smith with a Y, that's important, and as Rebecca, which is just like a name that she like came up with, but she really like feels like Rebecca is something specific. Like it is this person that she is being, but she's not actually. So as Rebecca, she goes and becomes a client of the therapist. So I did want to mention that because I completely forgot about it, even though that's in the synopsis itself, but I'm like fully into the plot now. <laughs> And it's funny to see like the different characters. You can definitely see that they all have this little bit of playing up to the expectations of the people around them. So Veronica did that. And we kind of know from the therapist writing about his experience with Veronica in his book that the narrator then read that she had a hard time with that concept. And she felt like everything she did was for other people. She didn't actually know what she wanted to do for herself. And not only that, but she thought her sister the narrator, she thought her sister like had it so easy and that her sister was like always being herself basically, that the narrator was always being herself and so like it was just easier for her and there were less expectations. But come to find out, since we're in the point of view of the narrator, obviously, she was really feeling the same way growing up, that Veronica was so perfect and everything and like it was so easy for her because she just was perfect and so her she gained the attention of the their father a lot easier than the narrator did um, but the narrator also felt these expectations to like live up to these standards and like try to be a certain type of person or a certain way in front of other people and then on top of that since we're getting the biography of the therapist we see that he also felt these similar things around his parents that he was being a certain type of person around his dad and he didn't realize that until his mom was around and like he changed up his persona for her and that like and it's all getting to the point where he doesn't like know who he himself is which seems very reminiscent of both Veronica and the narrator so it's funny that like all of these people are kind of having these very similar feelings and like even the two sisters they look at each other and think that each other has got it like figured out or that they're being completely themselves when they're not either and then lastly just seeing our narrator being Rebecca like it's really funny because she kind of takes on this persona when she like leaves the house for therapy and so anybody she like interacts with on the way to it because she's made up in a way that she feels like Rebecca would make herself up she already feels as though she's that person so then anybody she talks to like that's that's how she tries to be not just in the therapist's office and she's talking to somebody that like she just met basically and they're chatting back and forth and she says about like one of the things, so she like says a response out loud and then in her own mind says, I myself could never have come up with such a witty response. Basically saying that like it's Rebecca that came up with the witty response, not me, even though she's playing Rebecca and clearly came up with the witty response. So she's like so detached from this person that she's being and like, oh, she puts herself down so much. It's like, it's it's kind of sad to to read honestly. I also think that I might try out the audiobook for Night Crawling. I think it's the only three of these books that I can get as an audiobook. Otherwise, I would definitely choose After Sappho because I'm terrified about reading that book because it sounds so much like a book I wouldn't like. But <laughs> Night Crawling is a book that has an audiobook at least available in the US. So, and my library has it, and I think I might give that a go just so that I can be making more progress in these books. Hello, it is the next day. It's been about 24 hours since I last updated you, but I've actually read more. And oh, also I ran out of nail polish remover while I was in the middle of removing my nail polish. So very cool. That's why four of my 10 fingers are blue still, but I am 200 pages in now. So less than hundred pages to the end. And I'm in the fourth notebook at this point. I think I've gotten more bored by it. I don't know. There's like intriguing moments when I'm more into the story, but it happens so rarely. I feel like maybe once a notebook it'll happen and not for very long. And it kind of seems like uh, the notebooks take this progression of for the first part of it, there's something else that's happening in the narrator's life or that she's recollecting on something that happened and then it'll go into like the actual therapy session. I think sometimes something happens after the therapy session. So maybe I'm just reaching, but there's always a therapy session involved in one of the notebooks. And there, I, I guess the notebook sections in general are the sections I prefer. I don't really like the biography sections 
uh, uh, for the therapist. I don't find them very interesting. I feel like they're really reiterating the things that are very clear, I would say, in the main like story in the notebooks. Like it is so painfully obvious at this point that this book is about people having different personas for different people, which I've already talked about at length. And I feel like the biography sections are just like really honing in on that point and how much the therapist like believes this perception of people. And I just, I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, maybe I didn't know that he thought that, but I knew that that was like the point of the story. And when he talks about it, it's like exhausting. So yeah, at this point, I'm just excited for it to be over. Ooh. I did, however, start night crawling. I didn't get very far, I don't think. I was doing the audiobook of it and I maybe got like 10% of the way into the book, but I am enjoying, it's a great audiobook. Like the, the audiobook's done really well and I'm into the story of it. I don't think at this point it strikes me as like a booker book or like a book that would be on the long list. So I'm kind of waiting to see where that comes into play or like the grander theme, I guess of the book that brings it into like the literary fiction sphere and not just in like a contemporary area. But if I'm thinking about it as like a contemporary book, I feel like I am enjoying it. As far as that goes right now, it's just like lacking a little something for me, but also I like just started it. So that's totally understandable. I will say I am like invested in the main character already, which I think is always an accomplishment when you can do that with your characters, like get somebody invested that quickly. And I definitely want to see where things are gonna go for her. And I guess I should also include a kitten update. Uh, he's doing really well. We still don't have a name for him, although we have got a few contenders at this point, but he's doing well. He's playing a ton more. Uh, he's getting to be more and more of a handful. <laughs> and uh, tomorrow is the last day of his dewormer. So that's really nice. I'm, I'm very happy about that. He's still on the antibiotics and he will be for another like four days, I think after that, but it's a really little amount. It is twice a day though. The dewormer is only once a day. Um, but it's such a small amount that it's, it's really not that big of a deal to give to him. The dewormer I think is the more annoying one, but yeah, he is doing well. He is happy and healthy and that's all we could really ask for. And Scout is also doing well. She is sitting next to me <laughs> in uh, her little hammock. Anyways, that's all the updates. See you later. So I have officially finished case study. I've looked up a little bit about it, enough to know, which I was pretty sure like going into it, that the guy that it's about, the therapist, uh, Collins Braithwaite, I don't know if that's how his last name's pronounced, uh, but he was a real person. And then this, story is like inspired by his actual biography and what he did in his life, like true events, but then put into like this novel form. So I do know that as like, I have that background about this story. And still, I will say, I think that the ending of it was definitely the best. Like the section that I read between like this morning and last night was by far the best of the story. I found myself like actually wanting to find out what happened. I still, the biography sections were still like the least interesting to me. I didn't find that they added that much to the story. I guess a little bit, cause you get some background about the therapist itself, but I was just way more intrigued with the narrator and her experience. Overall, I didn't really love it. And do I think that this book should have been shortlisted, which is the question that I've decided to ask about each of these books. And no, I think that the judges were right in leaving this on the long list. It was like, it was an interesting read and there are parts of it that I am happy to have gotten, but I think that this could have been like a short story. But anyways, those are my feelings on case study. As for night crawling, I am now a quarter of the way through it. I'm still enjoying it. I still, I don't really see it as being like a literary fiction book. I see it more as being a contemporary, but it is tough to read and you, you really sympathize with the characters like right away. And I, I think that that is a testament to the writing is, is how much I am invested in the characters and why I can see them making the decisions that they're making, even though I don't want them to have to make those decisions is the way I'll say it. Uh, basically it's about this girl who is 17 years old and she's basically taking care of herself and her older brother who 
is trying, who doesn't have a job and he's like trying to become a rapper. Not only that, but she feels like responsible for some other people in her life and, and everything. And uh, the place that they live is going up in rent because they're basically hoping to kick out the people that are currently renting in order to sell the entire building and basically gentrification. So she's needing to deal with that and is trying to obviously stay living in her home, like where she grew up, where she was raised. And you slowly learn a bit about her backstory and then the friends, the people that she relies on, and then the choices that she makes to try to take care of the people around her. And it's pretty heartbreaking to, to read. And then lastly, I did technically start after Sappho and I'm feeling better about it than I was. I think I mentioned here that it was the book I was least looking forward to on the like entire long list, like going into it initially. So yeah, I'm feeling more positive about it now. So I think I'll continue listening to Nightcrawling and really enjoying the audiobook of that. I think that the narrator is doing a wonderful job with it. And then I'll be reading after Sappho and hopefully I can get these finished up relatively soon. Kitten update, uh, he's done with the dewormer officially. So we just have the antibiotics left, which is really, really great. And Scout seems to be doing a little bit better as well. So that's nice. Guess what I got? <laughs> that's right. I can finally take off the four nails of nail polish that I have. So I wanted to give just a quick update on After Sappho. I haven't read too much more of it. I'm maybe like 50, 60 pages in. And it was not at all, I don't know what I was expecting, like going into this book. But I also don't know where those expectations came from. Anyways, um, after Sappho, I'm still enjoying, uh, I like the characters that are being presented and it's done in this way that's like very detached feeling. And yet I feel very empathetic towards these characters and I'm very invested in what their story is and where it's going and I want them to get this life outside of what they have or to, to live the life that they want to live as much as possible which is tough because it's about women women's rights um and just trying to be as independent as you can be the book starts like a long time ago where they're like zero rights and where if a man takes advantage of a woman then that woman's father will just be like well I guess she's yours now also here's the dining room furniture <laughs> like it's just wild how little a uh, female life was worth you know and so this book is kind of giving those vibes but the female characters in it the women are stronger than that and like they they don't want to be obviously in the system <laughs> and are seeking out ways to gain what little independence and rights I guess they can gain. It's it's hard to even say rights because it's it seems so far off from that. So yeah, I'm enjoying it. I haven't read any more of Nightcrawling and I'm actually kind of taking a pause on this video for another video that I'm filming reading Hurricane Girl during a hurricane, which I think is gonna come out before this one. If it's out, I'll put the link in the description. Okay, so it's been a couple days, but I have finished After Sappho. So this book was absolutely not what I expected. I don't, I don't even know. I feel like lately I've just been doing a terrible job of actually knowing what books are about before going into them. Like I read the synopsis and then I wait like months and then I read the book and I'm like, this isn't, like the synopsis has just become something else in my brain by that point. And then I read the book and I'm like, why isn't this the thing that I came up with in my brain months after reading the synopsis? Anyways, this was basically told in like little vignettes that are mostly about women, about like lesbian or bi women, although they're all from like the early 1900s time frame. Um, there are a few familiar names in there, like Virginia Woolf is probably the most familiar, I would say, which was really cool. And I guess like the book is kind of a reimagining of these women's lives, not reimagining, but like it is still a novel. You know, there are parts of it that are embellished through history or that are imagining what these women could have been feeling and thinking going through it. But overall, I think that I had uh, I connected to the story and the characters a little bit more than I expected to be able to, but I still had a hard time with that, which I think is just purely from the formatting of it in general, jumping from like person to person. However, it did give you this feeling of like being a part of the movement or 
uh, especially with like the language that it used because a lot of times it was like we as a collective like soon we would have this right or soon we would be working towards this and so it made you feel especially as a woman <laughs> made me feel more a part of the story and this grander movement that I tend to feel more disconnected from because I'm in it at a later stage. However, there's obviously a lot of areas where women are not treated fairly and so there's still there's still a lot to fight for and there's still rights that we need to work towards gaining and then obviously we need to work towards keeping those rights once we have them. That's fun. So like I feel a part of it today but I think that oftentimes that feels disconnected from what women had to go through to get to the point where we are now. And reading this book made me feel more like I was a piece of that, just like a later piece of that, which was kind of nice. Overall though, I do think that I still kind of struggled with reading this one. It was more readable than I expected it to be. Like once I kind of understood the formatting of it and what it was like, I thought that it could take me some time but it was actually a lot easier, quicker of a read than I expected. So that's good. But I do think that for me personally, it's still like not quite my cup of tea. Now to answer the question that I am asking for all of these books in this video, do I think that this book should have made the shortlist? I, s I struggle with this one because I could definitely see it being shortlisted. Like if I had read this before the shortlist was announced, I could for sure see it having made it to the shortlist. But oddly, I feel like because Treacle Walker is on the shortlist, then it would have been weird to put both of these books on it because because they're both told in very different ways and like different from each other too. I'm not saying that they're the same, but just as far as a novel goes, I think they're very different. And I just, I feel like the shortlist is only big enough for one of them. The shortlist ain't big enough for the both of us. That's what Trico Walker was saying to After Sappho. But in my personal opinion, I would have preferred to see After Sappho over Trico Walker, I think, but maybe it's just because I understood it better. And then as far as night crawling goes, I am about halfway done with that book now and I think I still have a lot of the same feelings that I had the last time that I updated you except that it's gotten even more like I even more want to know what's going to happen next so that I feel like has only grown but other than that I still feel really empathetic towards the characters I think that the characters are well written and make you like you're hoping that things go well for them and that they reach the things that they want in life and the things that they deserve honestly. As far as a kitten update he's doing great. This morning was his last day of antibiotics which is amazing so I no longer have to give him medicine all the time. <laughs> well I've never filmed in this location before. It's been quite a while since the last time that I updated and it's been quite a while since I finished finished night crawling. Things have just been absolutely insane around here with Booker coming to an end yesterday. It happened for me. And also we now have two kittens, which earlier in this video we found and rescued the first kitten, which is crazy to me. But like that's when this one started. <laughs> now we've had him for nearly a month, but obviously we decided to keep him and we've, we're pretty close on what we want his name to be. But anyways, after doing a lot of research about the best thing to do when keeping a kitten and having a senior cat, especially a kitten that's as playful as the one that we found was and is, the suggestion is really to get another kitten, to have two kittens growing up together as close in age as you can, ideally no more than a week apart in age so that they can go through the learning process together, the developing process together. And also they're gonna be less stress on the senior cat, the resident cat, because now Scout doesn't have to deal with a kitten trying to play with her all the time because he should have somebody else to play with. So it seemed like it was going to be the best option for us, for the kitten, and for Scout. So we adopted another kitten a couple days ago. Today the black kitten and the new gray kitten met each other for the first time. It went pretty well. They're not yet staying together, but they hung out for about an hour. So this is our new gray kitten. <laughs> it was super, super sweet. Um, he's probably going to attack my microphone now. What a sweet boy. And he is actually why I am in this room to film this, uh, because this is Curtis's office, which is where the gray kitten is staying 
uh, while they're quarantined from each other. That was really just to make sure that he was cleared at the vet to be able to interact with another cat. Anyways, that is why I have not updated in a while, but I had to wrap up my thoughts on night crawling and I wish I had filmed this earlier because I'm having a hard time remembering the like, I think later half of the book. I'm pretty sure I'd only gotten to about the halfway, maybe like two thirds of the way the last time I updated. But basically I feel very similarly to the way I felt initially about it, where I like it. I like the story. I think that the characters were built out really well. I feel very empathetic towards the characters. They're easy to connect to. I like the um, symbolism of like the term night crawling, the night crawling into day where our main character has like these two separate lives almost that she lives that she really wants to keep separate. Her night life that she feels that she has to do and has been pushed into doing because she has no other option and her day life where she just wants to help her brother and she wants to help the little boy that lives in her building and she's just trying her best to keep it all together. But sometimes she sees a bit of the night crawling into the day. And I think that that's a fantastic title and just a great imagery in general. So I think there's a lot of great things to say about this book. I do still think that it doesn't feel very Booker-esque to me. I think it feels a little bit more like that now that I've read the rest of it than I initially thought, but even still. I do think, however, that this would be a fantastic candidate for the Woman's Prize, and I would really love to see it on that list next year because I believe it's eligible. Anyways, that is going to do it for this video. I hope that you did enjoy it, and if you did, please do consider subscribing. I'm going to be talking about the National Book Award soon, hopefully before it's announced, but I've really got to get to reading on that one. So be sure to subscribe to see that. And also I upload new videos every Wednesday, so I will see you then. Bye. This cat has just absolutely passed out.